Welcome to Business Day Sector Watch, where we take a look at companies operating in different sectors of Nigeria's economy. I'm Cynthia Madinago, and with me here is our in-house analyst, Mr. Bala Aogi. So what are the earnings outlooks for firms operating in Nigeria's pharmaceutical sector? In the third quarter of 2013, uh, firms you know, are operating in the uh, pharmaceutical sector especially the quoted companies like um, GSK, Pharmaceutical, uh, Foodsyn, Nemet, and Pharmadempo you know, uh, had a uh, sluggish growth. Uh, cumulatively, uh, they were able to you know, grow revenues by uh, 7%, which is lower than 15% in the corresponding period of uh, 2012. Uh, for instance, uh, for GSK, uh, revenue grew by 8.81%, 8 while uh, profits dropped by 23.30%. Foodsyn, on the other hand, uh, grew um, sales by single digits 4%, while um, profits grew by 22%. However, Foodsyn had a um, low net margin, which is they were not they were not able to translate you know, the top line um, impressive growth into bottom line as a result of. Um, Cost pressures. Uh, the same too goes for GSK Pharmaceutical, whereby they also had a net margin of 6.2%, uh, which is quite low. Why this sluggish performance? That's um, well, uh, the, the sluggish performance of the pharmaceutical sector um, in the third quarter is peculiar to the Nigerian environment. You know. um, a lot of firms, you know, uh, 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 where 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 succumb to cost pressures and this cost pressures were uh, was due to the volatility in naira the naira was devalued um, there was pressure on consumer uh, consumer in disposable income so a lot of consumers are not buying drugs as they used to um, in relation to the volatility in currency it means um, imports are going to be very very expensive so it's going to drive the cost of um, Raw material. What way can they boost returns and any plans for expansion? A lot is going on in the, um, the local um, um, the local drug makers are making um, a lot of effort uh, with regard in, in relation to um, expansion. You know, for instance, a lot of these firms are you know upgrading facilities to meet the WHO pre-qualification standard. You know, they've expended so much money, which again. Uh, which again explains, which again explains why you know they had so much um, huge cost in their in their in their capital structure. You know, they, 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 they expended so much in upgrading facilities, building plants, you know, investing in research and development. So that explains the, uh, 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 the expansion drive of these firms. You know, apart from, uh, aside from the fact that they incurred so much cost in. In, in meeting this um, WHO pre, uh, pre qualification um, standard, meeting these standards will enable them to compete with, at the international level. You know, a lot of Nigerian pharmaceutical companies are going to be producing drugs, HIV drugs, tuberculosis drugs. So, a lot of expansion programs is going on in the pharmaceutical sector. Any prospects for medicine acquisition? At the moment, uh, there are no known uh, measures and uh, acquisition in the sector. Uh, but I, I, I foresee mergers and acquisitions among the uh, local farmers, uh, local drug makers, because we have over 130 pharmaceutical companies. And in order for them to tap into the you know, Nigerian economy, so they need to come together. You know, they need they need to merge to form a synergy. You know, forming synergy means they, they, they will have a kind of they, they, they will increase their capital base. Increasing capital base means they're going to have more money to for expansion to meet to meet the WHO qualification uh, standard. They're going to have more money for research and development. What challenges are the firm facing? Yeah, um, every firm has uh, every sector has its own peculiar challenges. Uh, 
for instance, uh, for, for local drug makers, uh, there is this um, chronic um, underfunding in the health sector. You know, the health sector is not that funded in Nigeria, you know, and there is this issue of uh, counterfeiting drugs. Although NAPDAC you know, is doing a very good job in ensuring that counterfeiting drugs, the issues of counterfeiting drugs are reduced you know, to the barest minimum. Um, again, um, the issue, as I've aforementioned, the volatility in Naira, in local currency, sorry, in our local currency, which is driving costs, um, the expansion program of these firms, and again, the then possibly the um, the security challenges in the north part of the country because a lot of companies are unable to move their product to the crisis region. What is the outlook for the sector? Um, the outlook basically is uh, they have a very very positive outlook. You know, if you look at it, you know, um, we they, they may they may they may have sluggish growth at the top and bottom line level. In their full year results, but in the first quarter of 2015, we are in, we're going to see them their growth spike because um, the, the, the rise in non communicable diseases such as um, uh, malaria, cardio cardiovascular, you know, cancer, you know, means a lot of people are going to need drugs, people are going to fall sick, drugs are going to be needed. So, this is this factors is going to drive their sales and like four firms, four firms have met the um, WHO pre-qualification standard which means a lot of firms are going to be producing more drugs and it's going to drive their revenue you know, in, the, in, the, in the long run. A lot of prospects, for instance, uh, 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 Nigeria and Pakistan, you know, uh, mm -hmm. Nigeria is going to import as much as 3 billion worth of drugs from Pakistan. You know. Pakistan alone has over uh, 17, 17 firms you know, operating in Nigeria. It shows foreign investors are uh, you know, tapping into the Nigerian economy, the Nigerian firms to be sector. You know, we're a population of uh, over 170 million people. And the rate at which the, um, the, 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 the youths, especially those below the age of 10, uh, you know, smoking, you know, a lot of them smoke, drink. So it means that the next 15 years, there are going to be higher rates of cancer and you know, other you know, diseases. This will drive the growth, will drive demand for pharmaceutical products and at the same time spike the growth of these firms. Thank you for watching us today. I am Cynthia. See you next time.